National Working Committee of the All Progressives Congress and governors elected on the party's platform have called on President Muhammadu Buhari of Nigeria to obey the Supreme Court's interim injunction on the Naira redesign policy. With a few days to the general elections in Nigeria, the security situation across the country has continued to be of concern. But how exactly will this security situation affect the electoral process? We have uh, analysis of some of the headlines on front pages of today's national dailies in Of The Press, all these ahead on The Breakfast. Welcome, we're back with The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Tuesday morning. We're reaching you live from our studios right here on Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. Once again, you're welcome. We have interesting conversations ahead and of course uh, the hot issues of the day in Nigeria have to do with the 2023 elections and also of course a Naira redesign policy or let's call it the policy and monetary policies of the central bank of Nigeria. As we're counting down to the elections, how exactly will the decision makers in the country uh, sway? Because this will invariably have an impact on the elections in the country. If you know, you know. We'll talk about that uh, along the line, but as usual, we start with our top trending segment where we always take a look at what is trending in the country um, as far as conversations online and incidents are concerned. What has got people talking? What has got tongues wagging? That's what we will look at. Um, we start off with this very sad one. It's, it's, I saw it and I just could not bear to watch the videos. A uh, woman setting herself ablaze over her inability to repay a loan. It's, it's, it's quite sad. Um, she obtained a 70,000 Naira loan from a microfinance bank in Ogun State. And this is a, a woman uh, who could not pay this loan, reportedly set herself on fire. You see somebody in a poster there saying, Mugwe, you know, that's what we say in Yoruba, or uh, Ewo, as we say in other parts of the country. Um, in pidgin English. The woman identified as Mama, Mama Dada uh, is said to have uh, set herself ablaze in her rented apartment in Itoko area of uh, Abeokta, um, OKKC to be precise. And uh, she said she to have lost her life. Um, and uh, so she didn't make it out alive, is what we're told. Um, she was trying to avoid embarrassment of her inability to pay the $70,000 loan uh she is said to have said to her last sent her last born to buy her fuel then locked herself up after the boy was asked to go out uh, you know poured the fuel everywhere in her apartment and then lit the flame uh, her corpse is said to have been deposited at the uh, central or general hospital state general hospital ijaye in abeokuta of course um the political parties have jumped on this. Uh, the People's Democratic Party senatorial candidate uh, in Ogun Central, Rumide Aderi Nokun, expressed sadness over the incident. Um, he described the, the tragic loss of this woman as uh, one of the hardships that women have to endure uh, with loan schemes. With loan schemes, okay? Um, some people have said, oh, the government should, should take uh, a look at this because they, the woman's death is a, a direct result of the economic situation in the country, um, is what uh, they're saying. The nation's poor economy has forced the people to go out borrowing and to be at the mercy of uh, loan sharks and uh, microfinance companies who uh, burden them with um, unimaginable repayment plans, you know, subjected them to subjecting them to hum humiliating treatment, you know, including arresting them, locking them up in toilets and all that. Uh, it, it's quite sad, really. So there are two aspects of this, of course. Um, the first one is about the, you know, the woman. Uh, if you look at her state, you want to talk about her state of um, uh, of well-being, you know, mental health and all that, uh, is something that we need to talk about. 
you know, when you're facing such, such a situation, you have children, you have uh, people who are, you know, depending on you, you have loved ones. Answer, okay, is it the answer to, to put yourself uh, ablaze, set yourself on fire, to kill yourself? You know, what about your children? You, we have to think about these things. You know, will it make things better, 70,000 naira? And then your kids will not be able to grow up with their mother again? Um, so I think also a mental health aspect comes to this, number one. Number two, like we, as we said earlier, the, the loan companies, so this is a microfinance bank, do they, do they embark or do they employ, um, you know, tactics that really, you know, damage the psychology, uh, the psyche, have a damaging effect on the psyche of those who patronize their services, you know. A lot of people have complained about how the, the loan sharks, like we call them, uh, these uh, fintech companies, who send you a text message saying someone you know is owing them money, they are criminals, they can't be trusted and all that. They are methods. I mean, what, what effect does it have on the psyche, uh, the, 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 the mindset, the mentality, or uh, the mental state of, of their, their customers, you know? That's another thing to, to look at. Um, a lot of people have resorted to loans, so many. I've lost count of how many of these text messages I've gotten. I mean, since the federal government's intervention and since the uh, Consumer Protection uh, Council, um, as it used to be, it, it was previously known, now they're called the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission or, or something like that. Since they intervened to try and get these companies to do the right thing and even went a step uh, beyond what I think their mandate is to uh, <laughs> To, to um, endorse the, the, what they call the right loan companies. Um, I think they've, 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 they've been able to reduce how they do the, these things, but it's uh, still difficult for, for Nigerians. Uh, you know, I've not heard of microfinance companies affecting or you know, treating people this way. So you can't blame the company, but of course we, we need to talk about how these loan companies uh, behave. That is the second one. Uh, the third one is the, the situation in the country. Uh, of course, the economic situation in the country is highlighted by what this woman has gone through. I mean, it will be, I think, a bit too much of a fallacy to bring, blame the federal government or any state government or any government for this woman's death because everybody is going through a difficult time all over the world and it's not just in Nigeria and you don't go to setting yourself up, please. Government can't be blamed for that. But, of course, this is not unconnected with the, 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 uh, the economic situation. So it's still also a, an opportunity to tell those in power uh, to, to make sure they do the best they can, okay, uh, when they have the mandate of the people to make sure that things are good, okay, the economy is good. Um, but in all of this, I remember Mohamed Bouazizi. Now, who is Mohamed Bouazizi, you may ask? So this is um, a very interesting one. Uh, Mohamed Bouazizi was a street vendor, you know, in, 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 in Tunisia. He was a street vendor who set himself ablaze on the 7th of December uh, 2010 in a part of Tunisia called uh, Sidi Bouzid. All right, Sidi Bouzid, he set himself ablaze. And uh, he was, was talking about, you know, the, the state of the country. Um, that act alone was the catalyst for the Arab Spring, not just in Tunisia. Arab Spring means Arab Spring. You know, even in neighboring Egypt and other parts of the Arab world where, you know, people came onto the streets, you know, citizens of these countries poured out onto the streets to say, you know what, this has gone too far. You know, this guy set himself on fire, you know, in, a, a, in protest, you know, is what they call self-immolation. And he's a, a matter to them. He, they came out on the streets and protested. Uh, for, for days and weeks to say we're tired of the way government is being run in Arab countries, we want change. And it was Arab Spring, you know, that brought down the great Hosni Mubarak, the then president of Egypt. It was Arab Spring that brought him down. So that act, okay, um, of self-immolation, setting himself on fire by Mohammed Bouazizi in Tunisia, um, it was in response to the confiscation of his wares. You know, we have tax force in different parts of this country, in Nigeria and Lagos, you know, and other parts, but when they come and then they say, oh, yeah, selling on the street. Ah, they take your things away. They pack your things and then they, they throw it into your van and they speed off. So then throw it on the ground. That's what happened to Mohamed Bouazizi. He was a street vendor 
and uh, his uh, wares, his, his goods were confiscated uh, by public officials, municipal officials, uh, you know, and of course, they harassed him, humiliated him, uh, they inflicted some injury on him, and he said, how, how am I going to survive? You know, this is my, my bread and butter. You know, life is over, and he took fire, petrol poured on himself, but took fire and set himself on fire. And that led to widespread protests. In fact, the protests went violent, you know, sporadic violence around Tunisia and other parts of the world. In fact, uh, in Egypt, Hosni Mubarak stepped down. In Tunisia, President Zine El Abedin Ben Ali, who had been there uh, for about 23 years in power, also had to step down as well. That was in 2011. He stepped down in 2011. So it's, it's, it's 13 years now, or 12 to 13 years since the Arab Spring, but it's a monumental uh, uh, event in history as far as Arab countries are concerned. Um, will we have a Nigerian Spring? I don't know. Uh, but your guess is as good as mine. For now, all we can say is for this woman, may her soul rest in peace. Uh, I don't know who is going to take care of her kids, if she has a husband, you know, but it's, it's a sad one. It's a sad one. All right, let's stay with um, the Naira redesign policy and we go over to a neighboring state, southwest Nigeria. I'm talking about Ogun State. Uh, Ogun State is almost like Lagos because it's like you can stay in Ogun State, live in Ogun State, and work in Lagos. Some people don't even know the difference anymore. Um, We've seen sporadic protests around the country, um, banks being attacked, auto teller machine points being attacked because people can't have access to the Naira. Now, some of these attacks, people believe, are sponsored by politicians who uh, uh, are against this Naira redesign policy. They feel that it will affect their fortunes at uh, the polls. I'm sure you remember uh, from last week, uh, um, Al Hassan. Dogowa, a majority leader, member of the House of Representatives, APC, uh, after meeting President Buhari, taking his committee members uh, from the House of Representatives to Asso Rock to meet with the president over this policy uh, to tell him to either extend the deadline or to allow Nigerians use. He said he needs 70 million naira. He's allowed by law to spend up to 70 million naira, you know, for the elections. And he needs the money in cash, hard copy. He needs it in hard copy. You know, that's what he said. Um, but, of course, that's just uh, an aside. Well, for now, the protests are spreading around the country. Some people feel these protests, like I said, the riots are sponsored by politicians. I mean, I saw one yesterday, not far from where uh, I went for some business. Yesterday, I saw one. Uh, got out of a compound, and I saw some people around, almost surrounding a Zenith bank. Uh, you had police reinforcements were called. Uh, soldiers, military reinforcement was called. And I looked at the people standing outside the bank and I was like, waiting what I won't do. You know, I was like, waiting what I won't do. You want to, that's pidgin English, what do you want to do? You want to what, attack the bank? This is Zenit Bank. I was a bank, actually. Why? I looked at the people out there, like, what is it? Are you the only ones who can't access your money? There are ATMs all around Victoria Island, Lagos that are paying, you just need to go and queue. So why? Are you attacking this bank? I looked at the Caliban profile of those who were there, and I wonder how much, if at all, they have money in the bank. You know, was it, is it a particular bank they wanted to attack? You know, it's so, it, I mean, sometimes we just need to stop deceiving ourselves and stop allowing people to deceive us. You know, Bobali said he sang, you can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool other people all the time. You're, you're going to attack a bank. Okay, for what reason? You have money there. So after attacking, will you get your money? You know, so, so, I mean, this is what leads some people to say that these riots are sponsored. You know, well calculated, premeditated, sponsored by politicians who are against. This is what some people are saying. I have no proof, but what I know is that those I saw surrounding the particular Zenit Bank yesterday, where I went for business, I don't know how much they have in the, in the bank. And I don't know if all of them are customers of that particular Zenit Bank. Okay? I don't know how many of them, and you can see, this is what I saw yesterday. Okay, you know, so I'm asking, you want to go and attack a bank, so just, what exactly are you attacking it for? What is the aim? To force them to give you your money? This is what we saw yesterday. Now, 
You know, why don't you just look at, look at that and tell me what reason under God's sun, on God's earth, those people standing outside have to attack this man. What exactly is the reason? But this is not the story. In Shagamu, Ogun State, riots erupted yesterday over the um, scarcity of the new Naira notes. Um, some youth besieged a place called the uh, Akaribo Sabo Road in Shagam, or Sagam, as they say, uh, over their inability to withdraw the new notes. They could not withdraw the money, and they, they, they laid siege to that particular road. And some videos online showed that banks within the area had to close down uh, for fear of, of, of being attacked by, by protesters. You know, the youth made bonfires, bonfires on the road, tearing up, you know, some... Uh, posters of some candidates, uh, you know, presidential candidates, to ignite the fire. They tore up the posters of uh, uh, APC's Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And uh, they made bonfires on the road. You know. And then, of course, um, the bank staff had to run for their life. You know. So what we see is, is 10 people, 20 people march, you know, start breaking things as they're marching, then people in the area run Helter Skelter, then they just put bonfire on the road, two or three tires, and then people will film. See, this bonfire thing is not going to deceive me. You can light 10, 55. On 31st December, people light, light, light tires on the road. That is not going to deceive me. You know, People do these things just to make it feel so grand. And then someone will be there. Okay, film now, film. And then the person starts filming and starts crying. You know, and then they'll put it on social media. So it's like, it's like something uh, is happening. Come on. Even the one that happened in Ojota, the, 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 the natives, those who live around the area, that was last week or so, in Ojota area of Lagos, something like this happened. You know, those who were driving were turning around on, on the Ikoru Road, expressway. People who live in the area didn't know what was happening. Those who actually used the bank were, were running. You know, so, so where are these people coming from? It is, it, is, it is hard to argue against those who feel that these attacks are sponsored. Because the real people who have the money in their bank wouldn't want to attack the banks because they don't want the banks to shut down perpetually over security concerns and then they can't get their money at all again. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, you know what I'm saying? The real, the real customers of the bank, won't, don't, they don't behave like this. They don't behave like this. No, no, we won't be deceived. We won't be deceived. The people who live in the area themselves, who access that bank easily, and versus the people who are in their rooms, they're not doing anything, versus boys who are walking from far, breaking things in the process. Abba, 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 like Kenson Wiki said. Eh? You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool. So, so for me, I'm not saying all the protests around the entire country a stage of sponsor. I'm saying some people are saying, of course, there are people who, who will actually out of genuine need and want uh, protest. But I ask you a question. When you block the road, when you break an it, what, how, what would that achieve? You know, it's like school. You know, when we're in university, when there are riots, uh, when they are, look at them, look at them. Like I said, you can't fool, you can't fool. Even the residents, those who have money in the bank are running away. <laughs> you know, it's the drama. The drama in this country is just too much. You know, it's like school. When we're in university and then they say, oh, uh, maybe school fees something, the VC, vice chancellor, is not acting well and stuff. They go and break stuff. You know, when, when they shut down the school, the students suffer. They'll be out of one's home for some time. All their mates in other schools are going for lectures. And when they eventually reopen the university, the school will come with a bill that these are the things that the students destroyed. We're going to add it to your school fees. So you have to pay for it. And then everybody, even those who were not part of the, the, the riot, we have to pay for it. And then you ask yourself, what was the uh, benefit of such a riot in the school? So I, I, I know the, 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 the customers of the banks will be asking themselves, if I go attack this by my bank or a bank you know, in my neighborhood, how would that affect my ability to access funds, cash, in the foreseeable future? <laughs> because it'll be shut down. It's, it's hard to argue with those who say these protests are sponsored. Let's, let's, let's leave that drama for now. I think, I think we, we see drama every day in this country. We'll go to another one. Um, of course, Elon Musk has been tweeting about his uh, project, um, his internet company. Um, Rwanda is the second country in 
Africa to have access to Elon Musk's Starlink. I think Starlink should be paying plus TV for this. But um, Nigeria was the first country. Some people have been talking about the experiences. Some of the experiences good, some of the experiences not so good. Um, congratulations to Rwandans, but it's not free. They're going to pay for it, so I don't know whether we should congratulate them. Uh, but we'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. We'll take a break when we come back. We'll look at what the papers have to say right here on the Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. <laughs>